Hey everyone, how you going? This one should be fairly short and sweet because um, I've got no time for videos at the moment. Didn't get one out last week. I think I've got some pre-recorded content. I've also been working on this awesome little thing uh, which I need to make a video about. And I might have fixed the Mealy, so I need to make a video about that. And I've got a whole pile of 10 gigabit SBC equipment over there, so stuff. Go oh yeah, and then, then I'm working this um, paper hat. So all sorts of going on, but this just arrived in the mail. And it's the um, the Raspberry Pi Pico 2. So I thought I'd really quick, oh, fucking autofocus is still turn on. So I thought I'd quickly have a really brief look at that. I've got some chili and ginger spirits in a dirty beaker, because uh, it's what was close. And it's a Friday afternoon, so I'm hoping to knock this out nice and quickly. Now, this is a very, very interesting little chip for a number of reasons. One sec. That actually had um, weed killer in it before. I should clean it. Um, Pi Pico 2 is really interesting. And as you can see, if my autofocus wants to do its thing, it's never good at this, is it? That's what this is for if I ever finish it. That's my remote focus control using a Luck Fox. Yeah, whatever. So the Pi Pico 2 is software and hardware compatible with the Pi Pico 1 as a drop in replacement, which is. Uh, this autofocus is fucked. Hang on, let me just. Go and change it in terminal, one sec. Right, there we go, no more autofocus. So that is the Pi Pico 2, and it is hardware and software compatible with the Pi Pico 1 as a drop-in replacement. You see it is very, very similar. There are some minor differences, but this, this processor, this is where all the juice is. That is the new RP2350. So there's a few variations of this. This is the 2350A. Uh, 2350B, I've got some on the way, but I thought I'd have a really brief look at this. I won't show it off using it too much. I'll, we'll look at its power consumption to give you an idea of what's so awesome about it. Now, so many of you have asked questions about, uh, I'll let you have a look at the back whilst it's zoomed in, have asked questions about all this, you know, Risk Five versus ARM, and then why, uh, like, Milk Five are doing the boot selection and whatnot. Well, guess what? If we jump over and have a look, they've done it here as well. So the Pi Pico 2 uh, starts at $5, has the 2350, which even Upton had said took something like multiple millions of dollars and years to complete, and it is an innovation. Um, but this does something really, really interesting. If we click learn more and go and have a look over here, it's got dual arm Cortex M33s, which is pretty sweet. They've got some new uh, security features built in, but they also have two RISC-V cores in there as well. So they've got uh, the Hazard 3 RISC-V cores. Don't actually know much about those. Let's have a quick Google of them. I think that was, why am I, oh my God, I need more sleep these days. Here we go. So there is a GitHub repo for the Hazard 3 processor. Um, now, they've got two of the A30, uh, M33s and two of these Hazard 3s. And they've done some neat things. You can see here that it actually detects and switches dynamically. You can uh, change it at boot time if need be, but it will pick it up. Now these don't run full OSs, uh, as you'd expect. These typically run MicroPython. And whilst I don't usually use or stock Raspberry Pi products, they're not really my thing, I got this A because they are cheap and tiny. They're very handy for prototyping. B, because they have RISC-V, which you know I'm all about. But C, because I do think the way they've implemented the use for these is quite excellent. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, these have micro USB, which they should have, in my opinion, changed to USB type C, but they made it 100% uh, drop-in compatible. These uh, have two or three little things that make them extremely user-friendly. So first of all, you plug in micro USB and you plug it into your computer and it appears as mass storage. Now you can drop on there a new binary for it to flash with, like the UF2 binary, and it will detect it and flash it. Or you can drop on your micro Python files to execute on there. So you, you don't need any software or anything. You literally just plug it in and drop files on it and it starts working. You do have debug headers here as well, which they've just changed in the Pico 2. So if we have a quick look at the documentation, go microcontrollers, Pico series, Pico 2. 
they do note about how they've broken that out there. Now, the other thing that they do really cool though, and it is noted in the documentation, is when you hold the boot select switch down, so you're going into what is essentially their mask ROM mode, that data is immutable. You can't break it. You can flash it and do what you want to it, put it back in mask ROM mode and drop new data on it. You can't overwrite that part of the core, which is really awesome. Um, so these are extremely cheap. They've just arrived to market. They're extremely easy to use. They do have RISC-V as an option now. They run MicroPython at, or you can use their SDK to build C and C++ software. So they're really dynamic, easy to use, versatile products. And I'm impressed with them, especially you know, breaking the mold and changing the industry and um, allowing developers, hobbyists, and tinkerers to prototype with a wider variety of products. Not only that, uh, from what I recall, the Pico 1 had three PIOs. Now these are really important and I'll go over that in a sec. This has 12, which is insane. What's kind of cool, like what a PIO is, is programmable input output. Uh, and what you can do is write a small function that then works in, on the PIO, a bit like a small CPU core. So this has two cores of ARM or RISC-V, but then you've got 12 PIOs. So you can write a function, dump it on the PIO, and then it will use DMA to do what it needs to do. So it will uh, communicate with the core or other PIOs if need be, communicate with the IOs and deal with memory. So you can do a whole pile of stuff that doesn't actually use CPU time. And there's 12 of them. Now in uh, an article that I'll put a link to below, Someone used these PIOs to actually do graphical output with an RP2040, the previous generation, and that had three, I think. This has 12, which is insane. Um, so they've made a really universal, likable product. I hate to like it because it's Raspberry Pi and they're too common, but you, you've got to admit when someone does something right. Now what's also interesting for all those real tech enthusiasts out there is have a read of this guy's website. I'll put the link below. He actually worked with the Raspberry Pi team for the last year on this. Um, he's very, very technically proficient. He got early prototypes, as you can see, and had to modify them to make them work. And he gave them heaps of feedback, which they implemented. And yeah, that's uh, it's, a, it's a good read. And in fact, his whole blog's a good read. So I'd thoroughly recommend that. You can buy these online. I'm gonna have some of the B series coming soon that I'm gonna build into some products and give away. You can see there's already variations available. I don't know if I'll get any in stock, time will tell. Um, but I am gonna sponsor this video myself. So to keep it short and wrap it up here, um, I did get two of these. So I have an e-commerce shop. You can see it here if we just go Um I've got all sorts of stuff in. I've got stuff coming in soon actually. These are on the way and they look quite interesting. Uh, but what I'm going to do is the next 10 orders, use the link below, the next 10 orders will get free shipping anywhere in the world. And in one of those 10 orders, I'll throw in this second Pi Pico too. So it's a, it's a giveaway and sponsored by me and my shop. I stock the sort of stuff, as you can see here, that I think you would like. Um, I think you'll like this. I'd, uh, I got it from Corey Electronics, so they'll be your warranty agent if need be. But I hope that taught you something. I hope you have fun playing with these. And if there's something that you want me to try out or look into, if I have time, I will, but the videos are going to be a bit slower. I am a bit short on time because life. So take it easy. Enjoy your weekend. I look forward to hearing back. Comment below, like, subscribe, all that fun shit. See ya.